Did you know your fuse might fail when you need it? Imagine you have the following system. If a short happens, the battery can draw 4000 amps. This mega fuse will not be able to break this fault and the current will continue to flow, potentially setting your system on fire. In this video, I will explain why this happens and how to prevent it. If this is your first time tuning in, I'm Nick, author of Off-Grid Solar Power Simplified, with over 2000 happy reviews on Amazon. Let's start with explaining why fuses are crucial for safety. Most people think a fuse is just about matching the current rating to their system, but there's more to it. Your fuse needs to handle a worst case scenario, a short circuit. That's where two key specifications come in. The short circuit current rating, or interrupt current capacity, and in short, ICC. And the second one is voltage rating. Choose these wrong and your system could be at serious risk. Let's start with short circuit current. This is the maximum current your battery can deliver if there is a short, a rare but dangerous event. For lithium batteries, this current can be 10 times the battery's capacity. I found a study where they measured the short circuit current of a 160 amp hour 3.2 volt cell. This is the graph of the 160 amp hour cell. As you can see, a 160 amp hour lithium battery can deliver up to 1100 amps in a short circuit. We can see that the current is about 10 times higher than the capacity of the battery. But why is the current so high? Lithium batteries have a very low internal resistance, which means they can deliver a large amount of current instantly. For comparison, lead acid batteries have higher internal resistance, so their short circuit current is usually much lower. So we need to find fuses that can break this kind of current. Before I show you the chart with my recommendations, let me explain with a simple example. Let's say you have a 12 volt 300 amp hour battery. You want to fuse it with a mega fuse that is rated for a short circuit current of 2000 amps. This fuse won't protect your system from a short circuit because the maximum current that can flow through the fuse is higher than what the fuse is rated for. The metal inside the fuse will melt together or create an electric arc that will bridge the current. This is because a 300 amp hour lithium battery can have a potential short circuit current of 10 times its capacity, which is 3000 amps. That's why you always choose a fuse with an ICC rating higher than your battery's maximum short circuit current. The fuse voltage rating is just as important. A fuse rated for 32 volts won't work in a 48 volt system. Instead of safely breaking the circuit, it could fail, causing dangerous arcing. For 48 volt systems, choose fuses rated for at least 58 volts. This is a mistake I see very often. Here is a chart with my recommended fuses. MIDI or MI fuses. Use these for 12 and 24 volt systems up to 200 amp hours. I recommend using this fuse for smaller systems because they have many current ratings in the lower spectrum. Mega or AMG fuses. Use these for 12 and 24 volt systems. They have the same ICC rating, so use them for a maximum of 200 amp hours. You also have mega fuses rated for 70 volts. They can handle 2500 amps of short circuit current and are suited to use in 48 volt systems, but only with a maximum of 250 amp hours. MRBF or marine rated battery fuses. I like these because you can attach them to your battery terminal. Thus, you need less crimping of battery cables. You can use these in 12, 24 and 48 volt systems, up to 200 amp hours. 
ANL fuses. I don't use these fuses because they are quite large. They are suited for 12 and 24 volt systems, up to 600 amp hours. Do not use these for 48 volt systems. Class T fuses. For larger and 48 volt lithium batteries, you should use a class T fuse. Their ICC is very high at 20,000 amps and 125 volts. That makes them suitable for 48 volt batteries up to 2000 amp hours. NH00 fuses are mainly used in Europe and the rest of the world. These are similar to class T fuses. They are suited for 25,000 amps at 250 volts. These are suited for 48 volt batteries up to 2500 amp hours. I use this fuse in my demonstration videos. Not all fuses are created equal, as I demonstrated in one of my previous videos. It's crucial to stick to high quality brands that you can trust. I've linked my recommended fuses in the description below. If you want to use a breaker, make sure they are rated for DC and they have a high enough short circuit current capacity. This will be indicated on the front of the breaker as ICU. In this case, it's 10 kilo amps or 10,000 amps. Let's say you have batteries in parallel. I recommend fusing every parallel battery. As you can see, every battery is fused with a mega fuse. And then I have added an additional class T fuse for the whole battery. A single battery is 12 volt, 200 amp hours. And with two of them in parallel, we get 12 volt, 400 amp hours with a possible short circuit current of 4000 amps. The mega fuse will protect each individual battery, but it won't protect against the combined short circuit current. So as an extra safety measure, I have added the class T fuse. If you have 48 volt server racks in parallel, they will each have a breaker in them. So you don't need to add additional protection. However, I still recommend using a class T or NH00 fuse as the main battery fuse, in case these breakers or other fuses fail. Some say that the battery management system or BMS protects against overcurrent. This is not the case. The BMS is made for breaking the current during normal operation, but can't handle these short circuit currents. That's why properly sized fuses are critical for the safety of your system. If you want more off-grid solar diagrams, check them out on my website. And check this playlist for more videos. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.